Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Good evening to you. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. As we get set up for the Oilers and Buffalo Sabres, here we go. I accidentally, uh, um, well, accidentally kind of forgot what I was doing here. Got distracted upstairs and suddenly it is, uh, yeah, that time already. It is 6.45. We're ready to go for the pregame show, I guess you could say, is the Edmonton Oilers look to take on the Buffalo Sabres, a game in which the Oilers will have to have their A game, despite it being a team that we laugh at every year in the Buffalo Sabres. The Sabres, every game they play, the Oilers have their A game. So we got to go out there and step it up and get this job done here tonight. And obviously for the Oilers, we'll be looking for a much better effort than we've gotten Lately, give me just a brief moment. Like I said, I forgot one thing. I'm just gonna make a switch here so the lights don't kill me kind of deal and then we'll be good to go. So we'll plug that in right there. And at least make the adjustment with the eyesight right now. There we go, that's not much better. Can they kind of blink already now? And we can go over here and get the old TV fired up for this evening's action. Friends, welcome if you're just tuning in. Glad to have you as we're getting things fired up for the Sabres and the Edmonton Oilers here. 7 p.m. puck drop for this game. The Oilers made a signing today, signing Pat Patrick Stefan's son, James. Interesting move there from the Edmonton Oilers organization, given the history with Patrick Stefan, but you can't judge a player based on his father. So that is where we're at right now for the Oilers. Um organization there is news today it looks like on Stoffer's show talking about Noah Philp former Oilers prospect possibly coming back to play hockey next year from the rumors I hear on the street that would be true so we'll see if it indeed uh, comes to pass this summer the Oilers did retain his RFA rights for at least another season so we'll have him around uh, if he chooses to come back next fall and obviously he is kind of one of those guys that will be the next Lane Peterson per se for the Bakersfield Condors and the Edmonton Oilers. So welcome aboard if you're just tuning in, friends. Glad to have you this evening. Like I said, it's the Oilers, it's the Buffalo Sabres. As we get things fired up for what should be a very good hockey game tonight. I think uh, the biggest thing you got to look at here is the Oilers' lines and warm-up, according to DNB, Daniel Nugent Bowman. Uh, Kane, McDavid, Hyman, McLeod, Drysaddle, Fogel, R&H, Henrique, Perry, Yanmark, Carrick, and Brown. So the Oilers kind of stretching out the forwards tonight and kind of going with uh, pretty much generic first, second, third, fourth line. Nurse Stetcher, Ekholm Bouchard, and Kulak and Cece. So again, it is Darnay who continues to get the time to heal up and recover from uh, the twisted wrist, I guess you could say. So we'll see if he can, um, he can do the job here this evening. So... Um, Rick, Magic, Kyle, Alan, Christine, Rick, everybody are on early and as well as Two Wheel and uh, Peter, good evening as we get things fired up for the Oilers and the, uh, well, Buffalo Sabres friends is, like I said, I think tonight the biggest thing you have to look for over the Oilers is for them to actually come up with a compete level effort tonight because uh, we know we didn't get that last time out against Buffalo and that was kind of disappointing. We need to see the Edmonton Oilers do a better job here against uh, the Sabres tonight, especially being at home, especially being the fact that we are closing in, I guess you could say now, on kind of 90 points, a win or two away, or two or three wins away from kind of being where nobody expected us to be back in November, so that's exciting to see if the Oilers can indeed figure that one out. I do have to go back over to sportsnet.ca, for those of you that are familiar with how this whole thing works, I have to go over to sportsnet and pull up the scoreboard so you at least have that along for your ride tonight if you so choose to stick around. So we'll go here and go over bingo and browse. Boom and boom and we are good to go. There we are. As friends, we should be set up. The Oilers and Sabres just like that pops up on your screen. We're good there. So, uh, yeah, we're just a few moments away from game time. Obviously, at 6.51, we're not too far away from the Oilers and Sabres firing it up for us this evening. We'll see if the Oilers can find a way to really show up this evening I think like I'm saying I want to see just a dummy the opponent's effort tonight because I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if the Oilers decide uh, 
night in night out if they're going to win the game or not but it sure seems like sometimes they have another gear in them so hoping that gear is started right from the start of the game and the Oilers go out there and just absolutely show uh, show them what they're up to here tonight so uh, yeah uh, that aside I think it's been a quiet week here on the channel friends for those of you that uh, may be wondering what's going on here with all of TV over the past week it's uh, missing some live streams stuff like that uh, kind of catching up with some friends, right? It's been a, been a busy winter, and obviously it's been a stressful winter with the Edmonton Oilers, so kind of taking a few weekends here in a row prior to the Oilers firing things up for the playoffs to kind of catch up with some friends and get some situations dealt with, and obviously it's been a taxing week as well. I mean, never a, <laughs> never a fun time obviously sitting back and reeling from weekends but that's where we're at so we'll uh we'll survive and we'll keep going i guess you could say is you know everything uh, that happened transpired there in the playoffs last year it was a little rough of a finish to those last few live streams in the playoffs given the cat situation that's all wrapped up over the past little bit now and uh yeah we should be ready to rock and roll for uh, a good playoff run here i think for what, mid-April? Mid-April we get the playoff run going, so looking forward to that. And biggest thing is just kind of taking that time right here, right now in the past few weeks to sit back, relax, and try and uh, recoup a little bit before we really push hard for what could be a two-month run, right? It could be April, May, June, and mid-June before we're done with the Edmonton Oilers and everything, uh, everything when it comes to the situation of the Stanley Cup. So... We'll see. Obviously, lots to lots to be done yet here now. So we'll see if it all transpires out the way we want to see it. But again, hopefully it does, and hopefully away we go. So Vincent Nelvin, welcome aboard, friends. As we're uh, we're just waiting for the last little bits of news here to uh, um, come through for this evening's hockey game. I guess you could say there's not much else. Roster moves. The following players have been assigned to minor league camp for the Blue Jays, that being Connor Cook, Hayden Junger, um, Brandon Isert, Mason Flaherty, and Phil Clark. So Oilers well, roster or um, Blue Jays roster looks like it's getting thinned out here over the next week as we get towards the opening day lineup for the Toronto Blue Jays. So we'll stay tuned and see what that looks like as well and we'll see when we can possibly Get a Blue Jays live stream in here, maybe before spring training wraps up. Not 100% sure with the Oilers obviously playing as many weekend games and as many midday games as they have over the past little bit. But friends, if you're just tuning in this evening, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Thanks for being along for the ride here this evening. It's great to have you. I know it seems to be a bit more of a quiet live stream. I was up uh, fairly early today. I will tell you that much. I've been up... Uh, early the past two days starting work an hour earlier than normal and obviously with the road conditions down here in southern Alberta we've probably gotten about a foot and a half two feet of snow if uh, it's all according to some areas so um, yeah it's been a rough uh, rough couple of days here and now hopefully today enough uh, recovery last night is going to allow me to go the full way tonight on the live stream but not, I guess I can't really say no promises, but I also can say I'm going to promise a full live stream this evening given the, given it's been a long uh, long past little bit, I guess you could say. So we'll see where we go. Uh, as AJ, welcome aboard as well. As we are just getting things fired up here, friends, we're about five minutes away from this live stream technically kicking off when Gene Principe welcomes us inside Roger's Place to get our broadcast for the night started. So... We're almost there, friends. Just a little bit more to go. In net for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. It's Stuart Skinner in net for the Buffalo Sabres. It's Uka Pekka Lukanen. And obviously he's been stellar. 236 goals against average. 916 save percentage. Right up there with one guy named Connor Hellebuck of the Winnipeg Jets. Rasmus Dallin leads the team in uh, points. Jeff Skinner with 24 goals leads the Sabres. Or Zach Hyman with a four-goal night could very well bring home 50 on the season. 
and Stuart Skinner leading the Edmonton Oilers with a 30 win season so far. Stewie down to a 255 goals against average and a 909 save percentage. Not very long ago, he had the last or the worst save percentage in the NHL. So um, that's where we're at as we uh, we keep going along here. Right now, friends, is Roger. Welcome into the stream. Glad to have you aboard as we continue to fire things up this evening for what should be a good one tonight. I'm hoping to at least just make it through the first period, that's for sure, as uh, I can already feel the ice getting heavy. It's been a long day, like I said, and a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, obviously, here this week. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get back, sit back, relax, and kind of enjoy a hockey game overall, I guess. And see where the Oilers take us on a wonderful journey of 60 minutes hopefully of hockey maybe a little bit less even where they just really go out there and just dummy in the first period and kind of put the game to bed from there because I don't want to see the Oilers struggle against the Sabres for another game in a row I guess that would be my line of thinking this evening and I think a lot of people are alongside it as well so that's where we're at as we will Continuing the last three minutes before the live stream fires up here over on Sportsnet Friends and the Edmonton Oilers give us a hockey game here. So as we go along, uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to um, really worry about here this evening. I think we're good to go. Looks like Peter Laviolette has um, Peter Laviolette has now coached 1,500 NHL games. That is interesting to say the least. And everybody posting about their, um, everybody posting about their MLB The Show stuff. You know that. You know I love my MLB The Show. And then the Spruce Grove Saints making a stop in with one Gene Principe this, uh, this evening outside of Rogers Place prior to things getting fired up at Rogers Place. So... I think we're going to be in for a good hockey game this evening, friends. We're just about there, and we're just about ready to get this going. So, um, T Mac, why don't I uh, why don't I do the uh, this is Dolan TV and finger snap thing anymore? Well, friends, basically, I it is one of those things I caved to the uh, I caved to the people complaining about it, and I'll tell you what that uh, has allowed me to do. It's pretty much. On the videos, um, comparatively, pretty much after the first week of doing just the Hey Friends, Welcome to Dolany TV thing, um, basically the watch time went up almost 40 seconds per, v uh, per view, quite honestly. It's quite a while. On an 8 minute average video, the watch time went from about 3.30 to right around that 4.05, 4.10 mark per view. So. Um, that is uh, that is why we made the change with the Dolly TV finger snap. Is it was uh, a lot of those bigger outside the uh, bubble views. It was turning those away a lot quicker. So that was the move made there, and it's been successful. So I, I mean, I mean, still keep it around for some things, but not to the same extent as it once was. I guess you could say. So, friends, we are. Uh, now we're at 7 p.m. We're on the last commercial break before we fire this thing up for the Edmonton Oilers and Buffalo Sabres this evening. And, uh, yeah, we're just about ready to get things kicked off for a good hockey game, one might think, if the Oilers decide to show up and have a good uh, good effort this evening. I'm going to quickly... We're going to have a little bit of fun tonight. I'm going to quickly uh, grab a Pepsi, as I did so often in the last stream there. I grabbed a Pepsi and enjoyed myself a little bit here. So we'll sit back and relax um, relax a little bit and enjoy it. So hopefully not take, uh, take things too seriously if the Oilers decide to show up. Because you know how that goes. And so often the Oilers choose... Um, Choose not to put their best effort forward against the worst teams. As friends, we are at current, how about this, 5.6 hours into the stream, so we are well on our way to getting this done. Um, Gene Prince, babe, welcoming us into Rogers Place this evening. It is South Asian Heritage Month, or day, for the Oilers, the game, as um, 
Eight states, two billion people. Favorite sport is cricket, is what uh, Gene Prince Bay is reporting. So Gene Prince Bay's got us fired up for the pregame stuff. As uh, we are eight, one, and two, friends. It seems crazy. Giving away a, a couple of overtime games. The Oilers are 8 1 and 2 in our last 11 games, 86 points, second in the Pacific Division. We continue to chase down first. I doubt it's possible, but it could very well happen for the Edmonton Oilers the way things are percolating here late in the season, especially if the Canucks have a bad couple of weeks. We could really cash in. We've kind of made no ground at all because they were able to get back to it just in time before we started really catching them in the standings, but we'll see if it. Uh, Heats up here for the Oilers again sometime, maybe at the start of April, right? As Patrick and I go up to Cold Lake, I think we play the Ducks and um, LA Kings again as we did the last time Patrick and I were in Cold Lake, and I assume that could be a magical kind of cup playoff clinching situation where we end up going out there and getting our ticket punched to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Where we sit, how we sit, all determined at a later date. But the Oilers hitting the ice here ahead of anthems and everything for their, this hockey game this evening. So the Edmonton Oilers about ready to get things kicked off for a big one here tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. And obviously, this harkens back to the uh, offside game where the Oilers were already done the hockey game. They'd lost and they ended up coming back out on the ice and Stuart Skinner gets beaten in the shootout to lose the game. But uh, it was Nugent Hopkins denied at the very end that sealed it. And, uh, well, tonight we'll see what the Oilers can do to respond to what was a lackluster effort against the Buffalo Sabres. And I think tonight you'll see them have a pretty good one, being that it's home, being that it's a Thursday night, and being that uh, they're, they're kind of that kind of team that you smack them around once. They're not usually smacked around a second time. So we'll see if they can uh, go out there and put the uh, proverbial gas on and really get this job done. So we got to see the Oilers go out there and get this going, friends. Of course, the old text message is coming in here before we get things going. Um, yeah, everything rolling around, and we are good to go. Okay, perfect. Text message is sent. We are good to rock, friends. Dropping my phone, that's always good. That's good for it, right? As I don't think there's much else to really add to this evening's game. If you are just tuning in, uh, it is 30, 13, and 4. Stuart Skinner going up against Ukapeka Lukanen of the Buffalo Sabres. Stuart Skinner is at 255 goals against average and a 909 save percentage. So Stewie has been hot um, here lately. Absolutely just unreal for Stuart Skinner and the Edmonton Oilers as of the past little bit so we'll see if um we'll see if that can continue and aj uh, the sabers were your team before the oilers joined the uh nhl well see that's going back a long ways and that's uh that's the what was it um would that have been around the time of the french connection line in buffalo well that was a thing i can't seem to place it perfectly though so as soon as somebody mentions the name, they'll all know exactly what we're talking about. All right, friends, we are outside of Rogers Place. They had filmed some footage earlier today, so interesting to see that they've got the nice beauty shot of Rogers Place that does not appear to have much snow. And we are just about ready to get things going to start tonight's game as we are just about to roll up here on uh, the Edmonton Oilers game in a matter of moments here as we are seeing a whole bunch of photos being placed here as we've got a special guest joining on the ice here for this evening's game mm -hmm. and we will have a lineup of people it looks like coming out and getting this uh started for the oilers this evening As we are just kind of getting all the uh, special guests for this evening's hockey game sorted away. So 
We'll be just about there, and then we'll be uh, ready to rock and roll for a good hockey game, friends. I think puck drops probably 712, 715, I would assume. So we're getting close to it here as we're going to see the Oilers go out there and get this job done here against the Sabres tonight, I would believe. As we continue to see guests welcomed to the... Uh, Welcome to the ice here for the Oilers. And yeah, that's where we're at, friends. I really don't know. Uh, obviously, here's the problem with this. Uh, basically, all this pregame stuff and all, obviously throughout the game as well. It's hard to make out who they're introducing and why and all this. So it's uh, kind of seeing names that you recognize. But um, unfortunately, uh, I can't really decipher what uh, everyone's being introduced for. So... Relaying that information is kind of tough, to be honest with you. So I'll just kind of stammer my way through this. But here we go. We've got three special guests on the ice for the Edmonton Oilers. And uh, we'll have the anthem singer come on out and get things fired up for us here. And this evening is we will have a two-anthem hockey game. And we will get things going here this evening as Jasmine Singh brings us home the anthems to begin this hockey game. The Oilers are in the Navy alternates. One of the last times we will see them this year and throughout history in the Oilers organization, as I believe the idea is with uh, Fanatics to go to new third jerseys this year. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll here, friends. So we're just about... Uh, just about through the U.S. National Anthem, and then we'll be fired up for O Canada and get things going. My apologies here, friends. As, uh, like I said, I don't even know if I can guarantee going through the first period this evening. It's been a tough couple of days here, and we'll see if uh, see if I can make it through, as it's been a few days as well since the last live stream. What was it? The Washington Capitals win that we got things going. Connor Brown's big night as the U.S. National Anthem draws to a close here at Rogers Place, and then we are set up for O Canada in a brief moment at Rogers Place this evening. So here we go, friends. We are just about ready, and obviously, too, we'll have, probably have a ceremonial puck drop. So like I said, that 7-12, 7-15, somewhere in there is when puck drop will be officially underway if you need to tune out and go for a bathroom break or go grab a little bite to eat before this hockey game kicks up underway so <laughs> Peter uh, if I fell asleep on stream I will tell you if I, I, I said, I'm sorry for all you back home that have to see that I'm a I'm a mess when I sleep I'd probably end up on the floor there wouldn't be much to watch by the time I'm passed out in my chair because we are just about ready to get things Fired up here this evening as it is O Canada within Rogers Place this evening and everybody nice and calm right now but the excitement is about to boil over here by the end of the anthem as the Oilers fans are ready for what should be an awesome one this evening. I think the big thing for the Oilers tonight like I said is coming out with the big effort right out of the gate and deciding that they want to win a hockey game start to finish. And I know that's kind of been a challenge at times this year, so we'll see if they can do it. As there we go, we will have uh, the last few tones of O Canada rain down at Rogers Place. And there we go, we'll get set for this hockey game here this evening. And we will go and rock, uh, rock hopefully a victory here tonight for the Oilers. Stuart Skinner's got to have his A game, obviously the Buffalo Sabres. Have been good enough once this season to beat the Edmonton Oilers, and we'll see if the Oilers so choose to split the series or season series here tonight. So we'll get things going for puck drop here in a brief moment. Doesn't look like we're going to have a ceremonial puck drop, actually. So that is an interesting thing to note there as well. I thought we would, but. We'll have the Oilers get fired up here as they get the special guests off the ice. And we are ready to get things fired up for tonight's hockey game. About six seconds away from things kicking off. Awake, welcome aboard. Here we go, friends. Let's get to it this evening, shall we? As Stuart Skinner gets set in the crease for the Edmonton Oilers this evening. He will skate around and move over. Azuka Pekalukanen 
motions around his crease, does his last few peripheral checks, and he will skate in with a 9.15 save percentage this evening. Jack, welcome in. And let's get this thing going, friends. Warren Fogel, Ryan McLeod, and Leon Drysettle will start the hockey game together. I know last time out it didn't sound like they were quite having the game. They should, but uh, obviously the Oilers able to pull it over, pull it off, nonetheless. All things told. So we reached the 10 hours pregame and we are ready to rock and roll for tonight's hockey game as Drysdale wins the face off back into his own zone, chasing his nurse over to Stetcher. Near side boards, Oilers blue line, the Oilers able to transition through the middle. Nice play by Fogel onward and upward to McLeod as McLeod will bounce off the boards back to the blue line to Stetcher. It comes. He'll rip a shot blocked in front, comes back to Stetcher, rips another shot and it's blocked again as it comes to the near side boards and the Oilers will see it flipped out by the Sabres into the neutral territory. Sabres are able to punch it just to the Oilers blue line before the Oilers punch it back in and Fogel's able to turn over a puck down low. Here's a pass onto the tape, a dry settle, just the deflection pass back to the blue line didn't quite work out as it comes all the way down to Evan Bouchard in behind Stuart Skinner. Going to the right wing for the pass is over to Hyman. Hyman lifts up at the Sabres blue line off a body. I believe it hit Alex Tuck and went up and out of play. And he's still looking around. Where'd that puck go? Kind of, hmm, what happened on that one? And the Oilers and Sabres will have a stoppage and play with 19.06 to go here in the first period of play. As this one will get uh, fired up from just outside of the Sabres blue line. Or are they arguing that it's going to be inside the Sabres Line. It looks like everybody's kind of talking it over one more time. The faceoff will come outside the Sabres blue. And then Bouchard remains on the ice as the top line. Now takes a shift of Hyman, Kane, and McDavid. 19.06 to go as McDavid wins it back. Bouchard over to Ekholm. Fired in along the right wing around on the rim. It came. And it was a nice cut by Dallin that gets it up along the boards. And fired back into the neutral territory. Chasing off a of bounce as Evan Bouchard down low and it will be an icing call against the Buffalo Sabres. Sam Carrick, Matthias Janmark and Connor Brown your fourth line tonight so Sam Carrick who's become as intended a kind of fan favorite in oil country is back in the lineup again tonight and back centering the fourth line set to help out the Oilers in what is uh, going to be a pretty important game here tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. The puck chipped off the wall here and then it's Connor McDavid doing exactly what he needed to do to interfere and break up the play in front. Bouchard has the puck hit his skates and then he couldn't find it. Oilers didn't take a penalty on that play despite turning the puck over at neutral ice again. Stage Thompson will look to make the play off the wall. Looking bounce around it comes down off the wall again. Tuck fires a pass right in front. Shot scores. Buffalo just like that. JJ Paterka left all around in front scores the goal so just like that the Oilers find themselves down one nothing on a sloppy play and uh, that one started there um, that one started there by just uh, basically Bouchard losing a puck off his skates here him and Ekholm get uh, tangled uh, while him and Ekholm got reversed around and uh, just an ugly all-around play Bouchard was at the blue line and I mean, it was mono, mono, Paterka on Skinner. So that is tough. 18-22 to go. The faceoff won by the Oilers right at center ice again. 22nd goal of the season by Paterka. So, you know, he's been a pretty good player in the NHL here over his young portion of the career. So this one comes back down to Nugent Hopkins off the wall in behind the Buffalo zone. Excuse that. 18-03 to go here in the first period of play. 3-0. The shots on goal for Buffalo is this going to be backhanded down low. CC it will spin his man in the far side corner again, dragged down there by Kulak. Nugent Hopkins battling there alongside Henrique. And this comes back to the point as the Sabres will fire it off the boards down low. As this one comes back to the far side. Outside the zone it comes Bryson with it for the Sabres. 17-34 to go in this first period to play. 3-0. The shots for the Buffalo Sabres. The pass comes to the near side. Shot in by Jost off a tip. And here's now Nurse ribbon around to the far side. 
Picking it up is Jan Mark as Stetcher will come to play this puck number 51 on the ice for uh, the uh, Edmonton Oilers. 17.09 to go here in this first period of play. This one comes to the middle of the ice inside the Sabres zone. There's just Sabres guys falling down on every bit of contact from the Oilers. That's been interesting so far. Shot fired off the blocker of Stuart Skinner walking down the left wing. I believe it was Peyton Krebs. And now this one's played back down low to Stetcher in the Oilers zone. Nice play fools the cameraman. End up within the glove of Ukapekalukanen. 16.40 to go here as it's fired back over to Skinner. He'll play it off to Ekholm. Ekholm through the middle of the ice now. Loading up Leon Dreisaitl who throws himself offside and throws a little hissy fit about it as well. And that leaves his team scrambling to get back defensively. Nice coverage there by Fogles. Able to help uh, the seal up by Bouchard. And then the stream freezes. So that's tough. So this one comes now. For McLeod. McLeod looks to play it. Nice play by the Oilers. Ooh, deceptive play there for Drysettle. Trying to flip it near side backhand. But couldn't quite do it as Drysettle again feeds that backhand into the crease and with 5-1 the shots on goal here this one's going to be tipped back down low but the Oilers are offside as this one uh, this one is where it is as this will come back up over top of the uh, zone played there by the Oilers and now kind of just flipped through the neutral nice pickup and Kane just about had it there but couldn't do it as this one will be played ahead again by the Sabres, they'll fire to the far side boards, tied up there, Tuck kind of won the battle against Kulak or whoever that is on defense, yeah that's Kulak, shot fired there and save made for the Oilers and you like to see it, so Greg, welcome aboard, and we got Hey now welcome in as well and Homie Lander, I've missed everybody, we've missed, uh, we've missed everybody so far here. And Scott as well joining here in the last second as well. So our friends just trying to take a sip of Pepsi there. And uh, we are rolling along. So 15-20 to go here in this first period of play, friends. The face-off to the right of Stuart Skinner. As this one will be. Kulak rushing up through the neutral zone. Pucks fired in. And that's going to be Kulak running around and kind of going down low. Okay, I, Kulak kind of threw an elbow that uh, didn't have major impact, but he was definitely got the arms up to try and clear traffic. Tip in front. Nice play by Perry. Got a piece of it, but missed the net on the near side wide. Here's Perry separating man from puck, and now the Oilers all of a sudden have something rolling with the older players on the ice here. CeCe over to the far side. Kulak, the shot, bounces off of Lukanen, and he just about uh, squeezed that one through. From the point did, I believe, Kulak, as that's Perry again winning a battle down low to Nugent Hopkins. Over to CC, the shot fired. I guess that would be Nurse at the far side point. And now the battle continues. Actually, sorry, no, that would be Kulak. And the Oilers continue to win battles thanks to Corey Perry, but this looks like this shift will come to an end, and this will be Jeff Skinner chasing against Stuart Skinner. The uh, Skinner's on the ice here for both teams. Is this going to be fired up through the neutral zone? Connor Brown comes to play the puck. He overskated it and then backhands off the glass and in to the Buffalo Sabres zone. As this one comes back to the middle of the ice, Dandy back in by the Oilers, and this will be a stoppage in play because Matthias Janmark is offside by the looks of it. So that one a good attempt by Corey Perry. Cagey little tip right there by the old vet. All right, face off, uh, face off for Sam Carrick here. This one will be picked up off the face off and played ahead by Owen Power. Down low to Stuart Skinner, 13.55 to go in the first period. Off the boards it bounces, down low now as it continues to roll around. Carrick ties up there and First goal with the Oilers Saturday versus the Colorado Avalanche for Sam Carrick. It was a big one. And Yanmark's trying to win a battle. Nice tie up there by the Sabres, though. And they continue to just beat 
Yeah, marking to the boards here. They continue to roll along, and this one will come back. The blue line here is Bouchard. Fires over to the far side. Shot fired just over top of the far side, well, near side corner, but uh, far side from where Carrick was shooting. As this one would continue along the boards, played back down low as Sam Carrick's battle in there, and it kind of tied up at the high point, and now in a big hit from Nurse trying to be laid. Couldn't quite do it. 13.06 to go here in this first period of play. The shot, save made by Stuart Skinner. It comes to the near side boards as this continues over for Dalene. Shot drifted down off the skates of Bouchard and he makes the save no problemo. So that's that's good to see. That's good to see. So we'll have a stoppage in play here this evening, friends, to go to commercial break. And I think I will pretty much get up and done this first period, and then that will be all I'm able to do this evening. I am fading fast here, friends. It's been, uh, like I said, been a long little bit here this week. So we'll battle through, get this done, and then we'll uh, call it a night here after the first period. But I think the Oilers obviously responding pretty well after giving up that first goal. Not too bad at all. As, I mean, they haven't given up a second one, I guess, would be the way to say it. So... Hopefully it, uh, hopefully it all plays out here for the Edmonton Oilers. So, um, oh, see what happens. As we all get things uh, rolling along here, into uh, well the middle part of this period I guess you could say and I think Sportsnet Plus also started running a lot more commercials which honestly necessarily isn't a bad thing as uh, to be honest with you it's nice to kind of have something to keep going with visuals right the old distractibility during the commercial breaks as we should be almost step four uh, this middle frame middle part of the frame I guess where the others really need to find a uh, Find a way to score a big goal here as Chris Knobloch on the bench there for the Edmonton Oilers. Excuse that again. The Pepsi is wreaking havoc here. As uh, yeah, the Oilers just just need a need a good response here. Big goal, the Connor McDavid goal, and uh, see what happens. As there's been some good board battles so far in this hockey game. I guess you could say they're showing the one there. Yanmark and Carrick in the defensive zone, Yanmark and Carrick in the offensive zone. So 12.54 to go here in the first period, friends. 8-3, the shots on goal for the Buffalo Sabres. That is a uh, big problem. If you're the Edmonton Oilers and you're trying to win this game, you got to get some more shots on net and kind of play in the other team's zone, if you would, as this will be carried ahead by power, flipped in off the end wall, picked up by Bouchard, ribbed along the wall there to dry a little cut off by... Who is that? Uh, I don't know who number 12 is for the Buffalo Sabres. I don't know the Sabres very as well at all. So 12 and a half to go as this is now picked up by Fogel. The shot fired blocked in front. Fogel regathers, gets it over to Dreisel. Dreisel to the far side. The shot from Ekholm blocked in front by Lukanen, I think. And now it'll be picked up by the Sabres and back the other way as they will get across to the far side and then to the middle of the Oilers zone up high. I think number 12 is Greenway, who was traded from the Minnesota Wild the other uh, offseason there. As this will be picked up now by Bouchard as the Oilers' complete line changes. Bouchard with a nifty little move to cut back in behind. And um, this will be fired down off the wall. Picked up now by Thompson. Thompson over and across for Tuck. Tuck over to the near side for Paterka cut off there. And that's Hyman trying to bump him off the puck. 11.40 to go here in this uh, this period as it'll be cut off now by CeCe on a play from Paterka, but the Oilers look like they've taken a penalty or have they drawn a penalty? Hyman looks like he's skating over to the box. So it looks like the Oilers will go to the penalty kill here is a nice play by Fogel to bust away, but he had just kind of flipped up on that puck. And then this one here from Ekholm skating right down Main Street and just could not quite um, 
I just couldn't, uh, couldn't get through it. And then we'll be tripping against Zach Hyman. So there we go. Hyman will take the call, sit in the box, and 8 for the shots. About to be 10, 11, 12 for, for the Buffalo Sabres. Bottom five power play in the NHL 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I guess bottom six. As this one goes, 11, 31 to go in this first period. Nice play by the Oilers, and they will quickly get the clear in the. Bad uh, trapezoid area there where Lukanen couldn't quite cleanly play it, so it'll be picked up the other way now. And this will be Dallin across the line. Dallin to the far side for Greenway. Greenway firing around the boards, coming back to the high point. Tuck's got it for the Sabres. Sabres control in the other zone. Dallin walks the blue and fires down just on top of the dots. A shot there, 10.59 to go. Another chance for Thompson. He'll fire off the block in front. Nurse piles a man into the ice. And this will be cleared out by the Edmonton Oilers down low. A nice play there on the stick of Lukanen. 10.44 to go. And this will be picked up now to the near side and over the middle. And Paterka gets it over to Thompson as the Sabres try to set up the attack again. 10.5. Minutes to go in this first period of play. The Sabres just can't get organized here on this power play. And you think with some of the players they have on this power play, they'd be pretty organized. Back point shot. There it is. The Sabres kind of whipped that puck around rather quick and got the loaded shot off there just in time. Missed the net, though, all the way back down low into the Sabres zone. 10-10 remaining here in the first period of play with 30 seconds to go. In the power play for the Buffalo Sabres across the line. In on net, shot fired, save made. Skinner covers it up. And we'll have a stoppage in play with 24 seconds to go in the power play right there. So, Sorry, friends. Get going as this one will be fired up, and they're showing the highlights here. And this will be fired down low into well, Sabres territory, which should, with Owen Power carrying the puck ahead, effectively kill the rest of the Sabres power play. And this they can get a shot in the next three seconds. And a disruptive stick by Leon Dreisel outs there with Connor McDavid. A natural get the super line out there. Well, that basically worked out as they were able to kill off the remaining seconds of the penalty. And now the Sabres still rolling around controlling. Down low it comes now. Far side pass. 9.17 to go. Shot fired. Blocked in front. Shot blocked in front again. And here's one nice play by Dreisaitl to spring McDavid on a two-on-one. Hyman denied by the pad of Lukanen right there. 9.02, you had knew it likely wasn't going in as soon as McDavid passed off the puck. And here's Dreisaitl rushing it up again. He's got Hyman and McDavid supporting Dreisaitl back to the point. Here's Bouchard, the shot into the pads of Lukanen on a block. Scrambling around in the crease, Lukanen will fall on it. And McDavid will, well, draw a crowd here as there's all kinds of confusion around Lukanen as uh, that was quite the chance for the Oilers. A beautiful drop pass by Dreisaitl and a good walk in by Bouchard and then McDavid starts throwing shots. Interesting, interesting, interesting. As that's a lot for the Sabres to handle if McDavid... Uh, Is going to get physical as well. So here we go, friends. We got uh, just a follow up on the live stream. How we're doing tonight? Let's see what we're up to so far. So good. Um, found thirty six times. How about that? We are up over thirty seven point five two hours. So we should be able to um, we should be able to get things rolling here with uh, pretty good. Uh, Pretty good rest of the period, one would think. So we'll continue along here, friends, with the shots being 10 8 for the Buffalo Sabres, 9 4 the hits for the Oilers, 5 4 the face offs for the Oilers. Not really much at all to report so far. Each team has four block shots, so shots towards the net. 
have been heavy here so far for both teams. And uh, as well, you look here, Bouchard, Brown, Carrick, Cece, Drysdale, Ekholm, Fogel, Henrique. Everybody's just kind of sitting around, kind of doing the job so far. Um, Carrick's only played two minutes and two seconds. Evander Kane's only played a minute 58. And McDavid's played 304. So it'll be interesting to see if they can kind of figure out... Um, Figure out, uh, figure out if the Oilers can uh, get the Vander Kane some ice time and a goal here. That'd be nice. As this will be an opportunity now for the Oilers on the offensive zone faceoff to try and find a way to get into this goal scoring department of this hockey game. And you're seeing. Uh, Couple of young guys here for I believe the Buffalo Sabres, if I'm not mistaken. Luka Pekka Lukanen out there. We'll have this one come back to the point. The shot save made by Lukanen on the point shot from Bouchard. That was a good looking shot for Bouchard. A nice just wrister through traffic. And <laughs> uh, been reading along, I could say. As this one comes back to Bouchard, the shot fired, blocked in front, Henrique to the far side, now back to Bouchard, Bouchard down to the far side, corner shot fired off of Corey Perry and on net, and the Oilers now getting up towards that 10 shot here in this first period with 8 minutes to go, that's pretty impressive, so 8-19 in the first period remaining, Bouchard kicks it out as Bouchard will look to make this play, and Peter, I guess that would be uh, the Oilers not doing much of anything so far. Another play to the front, and Perry just couldn't tap it upstairs, as this one will come back to the line for Bouchard again. He tries to wrist it through traffic another time. It lands on the stick of Henrique on a failed clearing attempt. This Oilers' third line has been just absolute masterclass so far in this first period then here's Zach Holm faking the one-timer now Bouchard's gonna fake it now he's gonna fire the wrist or right through traffic miss the net Nugent Hopkins just nicely into the boards there against Olofsson wins the battle gets back to Ekholm the tip in front lands on the tape of Nugent Hopkins he got pushed off the puck though and this one will uh, come back over to power power back to the point Dallin shot fired scores oof there you go. If you want an inexcusable goal on Stuart Skinner, that would be the one. Is Stuart Skinner down, set, ready, goal. 7.23 to go in this first period. And Chris Knobloch looking on the bench wondering what the heck is going on with his team tonight. They come back just the other way, but it might, it's offside. It's offside, friends. The goal is offside again against Buffalo. Oh, lordy mercy me. That is interesting right there as that one comes across the line and then Darlene is uh, scoring the goal, but it's offside for Buffalo. Clearly they have the angle and uh, we are going to do this here again. So the goal is no good. It is offside at the Oilers line. I can tell you that much even before we get through the coach's challenge. So I guess if it was 2-0 Buffalo, they cheated, but... End of the day, it's not 2 nothing Buffalo. It remains one nothing Buffalo. As you see to the far side, Buffalo's having a hard time staying on side. And you see both players dragging. Oh, yeah, both players are offside. A little hesitation at the line there by Owen Power. And this will be a winning challenge for Chris Knobloch as he'll get a goal taken off the board. The line's been talking it over. We've got the official announcement here. They will talk to the referee and he will wave off this goal for the Edmonton Oilers opponent, the Buffalo Sabres. There's no way this stands. I would be shocked. No goal. Thank you. It goes back to being one nothing, just like that. I was going to say something didn't seem right about that the way it uh, came to fruition. And um, that'll be that. We will have a uh, Face off outside of the Oilers zone, so there you have. So Connor McDavid will take the face off just outside of the Oilers zone. Back to the uh, center ice area. The Sabres win it and chip it. Right in on net on Stuart Skinner. Glove save on the fly ball. 7-17 to go in this first period of play. 
And then this will continue along as Hyman working around out there. Shot saved made by Skinner. And we'll have a stoppage in play here. So, um, Everett, I guess the only counterpoint to that when it comes down to it for the Oilers is if you think they've sucked over the past several games, in the last 11 games, the Oilers were 8-1-2. and two. So, despite all that, even if we've sucked for five or six games in a row, we only have one regulation loss in the last 11. That's a pretty impressive... Uh, Pretty impressive go here so far. So let's go here as we'll have the face off to the right of Stuart Skinner. Kulak will fire around the boards and this one will come up along the wall as Yanmark wins the battle. Yanmark in on goal tries to bank it off Brown like Kane did. Didn't quite work out as it did last Thursday. 6.53 remaining here in the first period. And uh, this one will come back over and Skinner will go along the wall and make this one go in here. And, uh, Everett, don't let me forget the point I'm, I want to make on that is, I mean, sucked and flat, yeah, difference there for sure, but I want to make a point, I think it was Bob Stoffer or John Shen, somebody this week I heard making this point about the Oilers, puck's going to bobble out of the zone and we can make it now, is if the Oilers are winning games with their B or C game in the regular season, that votes well for the playoffs, the only problem is you have to watch them struggle in the regular season and think they're not going to win in the playoffs, but... Uh, when it comes down to it, you got to win with your whatever effort you got that night in the playoffs. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it works out. But again, here tonight so far, what was supposed to be a game where they respond against the Buffalo Sabres, the Oilers are chasing in behind their own net, having surrendered 12 shots so far through 14 minutes of play. And they will finally start away a two-on-one, just catching them flat in terms of the Buffalo Sabres coming back defensively. And Fogel gets it going here with 544 to go and Thompson will flip it out as this will be uh, so far I, I mean here's the thing this has been I wouldn't even define this as flat for the Oilers here in this first period this has been disappointing to be honest with you this first period so far has been pretty brutal for the Oilers and the shot save made by Lukanen from the point will freeze the puck for a face off to his left but uh, yeah no this has been brutal just from my perspective, why this has been brutal, obviously we go back to that Buffalo Sabres game uh, in Buffalo. The Oilers, right, could have easily won that game several times over, just never took it by a stranglehold. And here tonight, uh, the Oilers come in in a game they should be looking for redemption and really haven't showed anything so far. Corey Perry with the most dangerous chance of the hockey game thus far with that tip that missed the far side post just wide. So. tough to go um, but yeah so we'll see um, we'll see if the Oilers can bring it in the second and third period but it's been uh, been tough to watch so far this, uh, this first period is again it's uh, I, oof, I don't know we're also on commercial break by the way if you're just doing it um, but it, this is just again uh, the Oilers, the only thing I can say this season is you think when they should be learning the lesson, right? That Buffalo game should be a lesson in which where your compete level has to be against the Buffalo Sabres. And for some reason, it's not there again tonight. Um, I'm not 100% sure why the Oilers can't find a way to learn that lesson game in, game out, and go out there and get the job done. But I guess we'll find out if they... Uh, If they have, by um, by the end of this hockey game. So our friends, it's been a long night tonight. So uh, been a long night tonight, and we'll uh, we'll get through the first period and call it a night. As I am fairly tired, I knew I had to get a stream up here tonight just to show that I'm basically alive. Ooh, it's been a wild week, but 5:24 to go, and we'll see if the Oilers can change their fortunes here and leave us on a good taste. This is going to be a uh, chance now for Paterka to get up over the blue line. Nice cut off there by Bouchard. Shot onto the tape of Thompson. Save made perfectly by Stuart Skinner kicking it out to the corner here. And now the Sabres will try and start away. It'll come into the blue line. Backhanded off a Sabres player. Picked up by Bouchard. Bouchard will skate over the corner to the far side. Now here's Ekholm playing ahead, tipping in and on. 
to the near side corner at center where the Oilers and they'll be chipped back out to Paterka at the Sabres blue line as they'll rush across four on two shot fired again up off a of body and out of play with 440 to go here in this one so the Edmonton Oilers um, trying their best to get things going here but so far not much of anything from the Oilers attack even though they have double digit shots in the hockey game in the first period they just really haven't uh, come up with a good effort so far this evening to win a hockey game stream froze up of course so give me a brief moment we're back to it we'll go live and hit the button and uh, what we got is this will be a chance now for the Oilers to get out to center ice 430 to go here in this first period of play the shots um, the shots are 13 13 for both teams, one nothing, and it's been a well, it's been a pretty typical game that I'd go watch at Rogers Place. I'll tell you that much. Now, usually, the Oilers don't tend to have their best efforts with me in the building here over the past year or so. But here's now Stetcher coming across the line on the far side. He drives down low into the corner. That's two defensemen that have rushed the puck down low here for the Oilers tonight. The Stetcher will trade off with Nugent Hopkins. A bump along the net, kind of sees it go into the near side corner. And this one will be across the Oilers' line on a little bit of a chip by the Sabres. And the Oilers able to retrieve, come back the other way. And here's now a play by Nugent Hopkins up off the dasher boards and in under the tape of Dallin, who again chips out to neutralize. And that's what this game's been a lot of, is there's been a lot of uh, back and forth and really not much solved despite having 26 shots in the first period of play. So this one across to the far side now. The miss pass there. The shot fired and man in front and Stuart Skinner is on his knees trying to make that save as it went by the glove and 326 to go in this first period of play it'll be 2-0 Buffalo and uh, now here's Chris Knobloch looking on the bench again to see if there was interference there with uh, the Buffalo Sabres player and I don't think there really was comes up along and kind of gets in the grill of Skinner yeah, no, I don't think there's uh, much interference there at all. And uh, just ends up going into uh, back of the net as Jost is in the blue paint and kind of pushing along the pads of Skinner. So they might have something to talk about here, but I think it's going to stand as a good goal. And, uh, yep, there you go. So the Oilers just sitting back, not forcing the issue here tonight against the Buffalo Sabres, find themselves down 2 nothing. And with 3.23 to go in this first period, this has already been a pretty hard game to swallow. And the Oilers have made it even that much harder so far through just 17 minutes of the hockey game. Now obviously plenty of time not to give up on them, but uh, you can see the Oilers have to definitely have a better effort here tonight as Olofsson scores his seventh of the season. The Oilers immediately turn over the puck in the Buffalo zone, chipped up off the far side boards, and the Oilers, McDavid throws a big hit. As Bouchard goes in, steals the puck from his man. Just kind of a lazy play, sees it pushed off his stick. But the Oilers are able to start away. And here's Kane hustling down the left wing. The shot fired, save made by Lukanen. 2.43 to go in this first period. We're going to have a scrum in front of the net. Bouchard and Kane in there almost immediately. Greenway as well, talking things over with Owen Power and everything there as well. So... This one will be a face-off inside the Buffalo zone. They're going to show the replay of the Olofsson goal. I mean, Stuart Skinner, no way. Was there a tip somewhere along the way there? I think there was a tip or something. They were trying to show that slow-motion replay of. Somebody will have to get that uh, audio for me. So um, there we go. Face-off now for Leon Drysaddle. <laughs> Never, I guess, to say that. Flat? No, dead. Like, just an absolute flat line for the Oilers in this hockey game. As McLeod gets pushed off the puck here and nerf seats a high stick. Stetcher's going across, and this one will now be a breakout for Fogel or for McLeod. McLeod's trying to skate. Skates a pass right onto the tape of Tej Thompson, who will get it across to Paterka, and this is just going from bad to worse. It's one of those games that you know you probably shouldn't have streamed to begin with, Tice. This is going to be chipped up off the boards. Fired to the near side. Picked up by Nurse. Worked out of the zone. And the Oilers think they have the puck along the near side wall. 
Here's dry, subtle hesitation to shoot. Now to the far side, the shot save made by Lukanen on Nugent Hopkins as Nugent will bounce back to the point and then Kulak, uh, <laughs> Kulak misses the uh, puck. And uh, what do we got now? Too many men, interference. I don't even know what's going on here at this point, friends. I'm too tired for this. The Oilers clearly are even more tired than myself. And uh, I don't know what the heck is going on with this squad tonight. It's just been tough. And I mean, that's an interference call all day. As Fogle was just looking like he was getting twisted up in the washing machine by Connor Clifton. But, ay ay ay. This has been tough, and hopefully the Oilers now get that late period power play goal that just kind of solves all our problems going into period number two. We have a good second period to score four goals, and away we go. But, uh, no, I, I, like I said, I, I was just way too tired to do this from the start. And the Oilers so far laying a goose egg in the column, as this will be a shot-fired save made by Lukanen on the deflection. I think it barely touched him. 9.26 to go here in this one as this will be bounced up off the boards. Over to the far side, Dreisel's pass is cut off. Here's, uh, here's Bouchard. And now McDavid over here to the boards, bouncing back to Bouchard over to the far side, Dreisaitl. 76.1 and Nugent Hopkins to Bouchard here. 76.1 is the penalty kill on the road for the Buffalo Sabres. The shot now down low, the shot Fired in front, scores, squeaked through. The Oilers cut it to 2-1. Like I said, that late period power play, you know how it is. They always seem to find one at the end of a bad period. And it ends up going into the back of the net. So the Oilers sitting a little bit better. Now they still got a minute to play with here. And it'd be nice to see them score another goal. But uh, that one across and a shot fired through. Oh man, they're taking their time showing this replay as Dreisaitl... Just kind of dribbled it through on Lucan in there. And a really good shot there from Dreisel right in front on a one-timer from a Ovechkin spot. That kind of seems off, but we'll take that as a win. And obviously see where we go from here with the last minute 05 to go. The Oilers win the center ice face-off for, I think, the fourth time this hockey game. Comes down low into the Buffalo Sabres zone. Henrique's chasing after it. He almost was able to steal that one away and thanks to Henrique's effort McLeod was able to turn back the puck a brief moment Bouchard able to get the assist on that one Perry fires a shot to Lucan and he'll swallow it up and that might be a mistake to make the uh, save and cover up with 42.8 seconds to go and give the Oilers another face off in the offensive zone but interesting 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 here with the Oilers again like I said find a late period power play find a way to score on it, and now all of a sudden are only down low uh, by one goal, but it's just uh, it's just silly that it seems to be every first period after a bad period we get that power play goal, but we'll take it, we'll take it. As the shot fired here is over top of the net, the Oilers did get an opportunity on net, and they're going to try and get another one here, it looks like, as they continue to push back the Buffalo Sabres, and now across the line, here's Hyman shot fired, save made by Lucan in 24 seconds to go. I've got hairs flying all over the place here for some reason. And the Oilers trying to tie this one up as McDavid can't do it. 18 point, uh, point, uh, six seconds or something like that when I was trying to say that. But here we go. We have got nothing, um, nothing left in this first period, friends. Period is done. The time is done. And I am done. I am pretty much probably going to go throw this one on the radio or whatever in the bedroom and just kind of lay there and listen to whatever I hear till the end of uh, end of the night when I pass out. So, friends, thank you so much for being aboard tonight. Again, I was awful. You were excellent as per usual. We will uh, catch you here a little later on. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Really do appreciate being aboard. I'm going to go get some sleep because I dang well need some sleep. But the Oilers... They got two periods to go get themselves a win. We'll see what they can do. I'm Tyson. This is Stall on TV. As always, friends, I am up on. Hold it here.